Okay, this is the ML100 from NS. These are the accessories typically received with the machine. Of course, you have a printed manual. You have a set of four leveling feet. You have a wrench, a release tool, and your fixtures for doing bent material, plus the releases for those. To use your bent fixture tools, you remove this single bolt from here. This allows you to pivot the automatic feed unit back out of the way. You then place the support and the groove here on the front of the machine and use the provided locking handle as shown to lock that in place. Now you have somewhere to support your bent material to be finished in the machine. You would also do the exact same thing with your other support on the back side of the machine. Now we'll talk about the controls of the ML machines. Basically what you have here is your emergency stop. That's just a standard press to release. You have your automatic feed. You can choose the directions with the left control knob. You can have it feed to the left or to the right. And it has a variable speed control. Below that is your power on and off for your main planetary wheel, which is not adjustable in this particular model. Then below that you have your abrasive belts. You have the on switch and the variable speed. So you can control how fast the abrasive belts run on the machine. On the front you have your electrical panel. This key allows you access. Inside here is where you would typically find the accessories that come with the machine uh, upon opening up the container. This is also where you'll find your main power switch for the machine. It's just a matter of turning the switch on. All right, now let's talk a little bit more about the ML machine itself. Here you have the release for your top cover. Once you open your top cover, you'll notice that back here is actually a safety switch for the top cover. If the cover is open while the machine's running, it will automatically stop. Here you have your adjuster and your release, as well as your tension spring. This spring applies all the pressure you need to keep your belts tight on the machine. At no time do you need to pull and add any extra tension. The spring here will basically do the job for you. Now we're going to show you how to change the belts. He's going to release the tension. Now it's just a simple matter of pulling the belt off of the machine. And we're going to change the abrasive belt over to a scotch brite because it doesn't really matter. The machine can run just about any belt on the market. So here you have a fine scotch brite belt going on. Now all you need to do here is do as best you can to get it basically centered on the rollers. The rollers are automatically centering for the belts. So as long as you get it relatively close, it'll take care of the rest for you. Now once you have your belt in place and you want to release the tension, release the screw, don't pull on the handle. You're just going to let the spring do the work. Tighten up your bolt so it doesn't move and you're finished. You've changed the belt. Now, there are a couple of markings to be aware of. There is a red arrow here on the disc itself because this planetary rotates when the machine is in operation. You want to make sure that that arrow is indicating your direction of rotation. That same arrow is here on the cover as well. So if you have your phases connected backwards, you might find that the planetary spins the wrong direction. You want to make sure that it is in fact turning with the arrow. All right, now we're going to show you how to set the machine up to process this tubing. Uh, this tubing is actually 55 millimeters in diameter. You'll notice that if we open the cover, that there is actually a scale here that goes from 10 millimeters down at the bottom all the way to 100 millimeters at the top. Release your tension. And now you're able to move the adjuster. You move the adjuster to align it with the dimension mark that you need. In this case, we're going for 55 millimeters. Lock your adjuster down, reapply your belt tension. Now you can use the pedal again to manually advance the wheel to get to your second adjuster. These two adjusters must be set to the exact same measurement in order to get an even finish on your tubing. The process is the same. Release your tension, loosen your adjuster, align the marks. In this case, again, we're going for 55 millimeter. Reapply your abrasive belt tension. Now you've set the machine to process 55 millimeter tubing. You can see now that we're in a pretty good position to process this material. If you're finding that you want to apply excessive amounts of pressure to your tubing, it may be that you need to use a coarser abrasive. 
Um, usually more pressure is not better. It tends to accelerate the wear of the abrasives as well as the wear on all of your rubber, uh, your rubber drive rollers and your tension rollers used here on the back side of the machine. Now we're going to show you how to process the material that we just set the machine up for. You're going to start your planetary, then you'll start your abrasive belts, and you can adjust your abrasive belts as you see fit. You're going to use the foot pedal to slow down your abrasive belts and allow your tubing to enter the machine. Now, basically, the speed of the abrasive belts that you choose is going to be determined by your material. If you need to remove a lot of stock or a weld seam, you might need a little more speed. The speed of your automatic feed relates to that as well. The faster the material moves through the machine, the less material you theoretically would remove. If you need to remove an excessive amount, you would want to slow your automatic feed down.